Hello, uh, and welcome to uh, the StarkNet Africa event. My name is Eli Ben Sasson. I am a CEO and co-founder of Starkware, and I'm also a co-inventor of the Stark and Fry protocols. And pr prior to uh, founding Starkware, I was also uh, a founding scientist of the Zcash cryptocurrency. I've been in crypto for the past uh, 11 years, uh, since uh, May uh, 2013, and I've been researching uh, ZK proofs and uh, validity proofs uh, for more than um, 20, 20 years. So I would like to tell you in this short presentation about StarkNet's uniqueness, um, its trailblazing technology, its vision, its ecosystem. I would like to tell you about its UX and UI, which are um, really groundbreaking. It is the first chain with 100% native account abstraction. And I would like to tell you about the thing we're most famous for, which is scale and performance, um, which poises us to be the first to reach global escape velocity. So let's dive into this. Um, first of all, um, I welcome you to the ecosystem. Some of you are already, you know, um, members of the ecosystem, and some of you are probably new. Um, you should be uh, proud of this ecosystem. It is the most growing layer two ecosystem in terms of developers. And if you look around, you'll see um, that it's quite an achievement. So um, it is also a technology stack that is the next generation for writing smart contracts and developing um, applications over blockchains. So if you take the words of Moody Salem, who was the former lead Solidity developer of the Uniswap protocol and is now the founder of Akubo, which is an AMM over StarkNet, he has written a lot of Solidity, of course. And he says that as someone who has never written any Rust, I picked it up in a few weeks, and I'm as efficient in writing Cairo contracts as Solidity. It will be my preferred environment for writing smart contracts. Or you can take Itamar Le Suisse, the co-founder and CEO of Argent, uh, one of the leading wallets with native account abstraction on StarkNet, who says, StarkNet's ecosystem feels like early Ethereum. It attracts the best talent in the space with its decentralized approach to development and innovation. So welcome aboard. You'll enjoy the ride. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about what StarkNet is about. Um, and some of our values or principles that we operate by. So first of all, we are trailblazing innovators. We don't copy, others copy from us. Um, we are not afraid of progress and change. We embrace criticism and adapt, um, and we stay true to our vision and we don't take shortcuts. Let me open up what each of one of these means. So um, I was the first to talk about uh, scaling blockchains with the technology of zero knowledge proofs. And this happened 11 years ago, pretty much exactly um, in May 2013. I will try to play to you a little bit of this, uh, um, of my talk there, which was recorded. Welcome everyone. I'm gonna tell you about um, a project that we're very enthusiastic about and I think it can also help the Bitcoin community. It's an enabling technology based on a breakthrough in theoretical computer science that I want to describe to you, especially focusing on the applications to the Bitcoin community. So I'll start with some examples of the things we can do. And let's take some things the way they're done today with Bitcoin and the way we can you know, change it and make it better. So today when a new Bitcoin node fires up, what it does, it downloads all of the blockchain from the Genesis block, and it needs to verify all of the transactions there. If our system is used, which is which implements succinct computational integrity and privacy, you could do it much more efficiently. Uh, the new node that fires up just downloads the last hash, and then it downloads a very short signature that some other node verified all of the blockchain. The signature is short, let's say less than one megabyte, it's probably gonna be on the order of several uh, kilobytes, and it's very easily verifiable. And the important things are that this is a non-forgeable um, signature 
It cannot be forged in any way. And if you read it and check it, which takes less than one second, then you know that all of the transactions were verified by someone leading to this very last uh, block. Another example of computational integrity. Today, if a mobile application, you know, your cellular reads a transaction, then it checks it with a bunch of other nodes and it pretty much has to trust them that they verify that it's legal. Well, if you're gonna use our system, then what you can do is you still check that it appears on some other um, nodes, but you will receive it with a signature that certifies that this node has checked the transaction. And again, the signature is gonna be very short. So these are words that I spoke uh, 11 years ago, and now they may sound familiar because everyone is talking about scaling blockchains, including Bitcoin, using validity proofs and ZK proofs. But you, you'll have to trust me on this. This was the very first time that someone spoke in the world of blockchain about using this technology to scale blockchains. So uh, by now, everyone agrees that scaling uh, with Starks is the way, is the end game for scaling blockchain. But we were the first to say it. Uh, and there are a bunch of things that we were the first, uh, I was the first to say, we were the first to say, and now have become gold standard everywhere. So I was the first to talk about general purpose, zero knowledge as a way to scale and to solve privacy on blockchains. Uh, we were the first to say that the, among all different proof systems, Starks are the best scaling technology. We were the first to say that validity rollups are the way to scale uh, blockchains, and we were also the very first to deploy it. We deployed the very first L2 onto Ethereum uh, already um, four years ago in the summer of 20, uh, 2020, uh, the Stark X system. And um, we were the ones to invent and coin the terms Validium and Volition, data availability, and put them into use. Uh, we were the first to come up with a production ready general purpose uh, ZKVM, which is Cairo. So we're often the first to suggest and the first to implement stuff. And um, then I want to talk about this, this second principle. We do not fear progress and change. So almost in change, almost it, always when we came up with something new, there was initial opposition. You know, is uh, Stark the best technology for scaling? Should you use validity, validity and validiums? Uh, are they safe enough? You know, should you build a different uh, virtual machine and not just go with the Ethereum virtual machine? We always face a little bit of opposition because when you say something revolutionary and new, even if it's uh, good and better, it takes some time for others to uh, see this. But now most of the things we said have become the gold standard and we're very proud of that. At the same time, we also embrace criticism and we're uh, very fast to adapt and, and accept uh, criticism. So, um, you know, the, when we did the provisions um, event in February uh, a few months ago, there was some uh, request from the ecosystem to change the investor and team unlock schedule, and we did that. Um, we listened to requests to reduce the contract deploying cost. Um, we started working on performance, but heard from the ecosystem that we must, first of all, fix stability. So we listen very intently to what the ecosystem says, and we follow suit. And the last thing I want to say is that um, so by the way, you know, I want to share with you that the current focus of myself and most of the team is how to increase demand and bring more applications and usage onto StarkNet. And we want to bring novel applications and we want to demonstrate the unique power of StarkNet, things that cannot be found anywhere else. And there are quite a few in abundance. I hope that you, the developers of StarkNet Africa, will join us and others in displaying to the world the novelty and usage of StarkNet. Finally, I want to share with you our vision, our vision and why we're doing this. Why do I wake up in the morning and come to the office and work with this amazing team? Well, the first reason is just that I love the amazing ecosystem and the team that we've built, uh, a bunch of gigabrains. Uh, there's no one better out there when it comes to building this technology stack. Even our competitors will acknowledge that. Um, but the second thing is our vision. And our vision is that in a free society, integrity should never be assumed. It should be demonstrated publicly. And we are building the tools to allow society to demand and insist that integrity be demonstrated publicly through proofs, through transparent smart contracts, through putting things on a blockchain at global scale, 
you know, I'm sure a lot of you are, are users today of systems like NPISA and others that require you to trust the integrity of some third parties. Um, we would like to move to a better uh, world in which um, the integrity of those servicing you, let's say with your payments, um, their integrity is not assumed and not just trusted. It is demonstrated publicly for all to see by them publishing smart contracts that they are bound by and then proving using start proofs and writing things in Cairo, showing to the world and to the public that they are operating with integrity and doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Another thing is that um, if we achieve this vision in which integrity should never be assumed, but rather demonstrated publicly, what you will get and I will get and everyone will get is that you will be the true owner of your data, of your assets, of your actions, of your life. That's not the case right now. You ask other applications and computer programs to act on your behalf. You entrust your data, your life with them, but they operate according to other principles and incentives. If our vision um, is made reality, then you and I will own our life in the digital world and in the world. So no shortcuts. We never have taken, never will take any compromises to integrity, to security, transparency, excellence, magnanimity, um, even at the expense of short-term wins. This is something that we're unique in, in the space of uh, layer twos and scaling Ethereum. There are so many teams out there who, first of all, go and try to farm the ecosystem and the users and promise them that, you know, things like security uh, and integrity will come a little bit later. But for now, let's have fun. We work uh, in the opposite uh, direction. First of all, we make sure that everything is safe and sound and operates with integrity, and then we go and brag about it. Let me tell you a little bit about the trailblazing UX and UI. And the best thing to do is to download one of the wallets and applications on StarkNet and uh, notice how, what a pleasant UI and UX they give you. And that is because we have on StarkNet, we are the only chain to have 100% native account abstraction. Um, what, what does this mean? It means that there is no enshrining of a particular way to sign uh, contracts and keep funds safe. Basically, we tell the applications, you find the very best way, the most secure way to secure funds, and that is how you're going to write your wallets with. So because of this, um, you will find um, a Web2 uh, UX experience on Bravos and Argent, the two leading uh, wallets on StarkNet. Um, and you can have systems built using things like periodic payments, safer multi-sigs, um, wallet policies, social recovery, things that everyone craves and we need it in our world, but uh, you know, only through uh, native account abstraction will you obtain this. Now, uh, the downside of this is that it takes a little bit longer for the world that is used right now to using all, to using all kinds of hardware wallets and writing down 24 word passphrases and stuff like that. It takes a little bit of time to recognize that there's a better, safer, more UX friendly way to, to operate and move to it. But I think once again, we'll be leading the way on this. Now, finally, I would like to tell you a little bit about scale and what's our plan on reaching, you know, a, a TPS of uh, 10,000. So 10,000 transactions per second. Uh, first of all, how are we going to get there? Uh, you know, how soon are we going to get there? What are our building, uh, what are our blockers in getting there? But then most importantly, I want to end with saying, with explaining why. Why is it that we want to reach 10,000 TPS on StarkNet? So let's start with the how. You know, our first generation prover is called Stone. It's been in production for more than four years, and it's uh, settled already over $1.2 trillion, saved our customers over $1 billion of dollars in fees. And is already has already processed a huge amount of transactions. Now, if we look at the capacity of our chain right now for ERC20 transfers, you know, what is our TPS and wh where are our uh, uh, blocking points? So the first thing is that uh, the stone prover already today can prove uh, blocks at a capacity that is between 1,000 and 2,000 transactions per second. 
and it can do so consistently for many days and weeks at the end. We already tested this. Um, this is for the current generation prover. So it can operate, uh, you know, can prove uh, blocks with 1,000, 2,000 TPS today. We are building the next generation prover called Stu um, that's going to be 100x faster. It will be in production within, uh, you know, one to two years. So you're talking about a capacity of proving that is between, uh, you know, uh, that is around um, 100,000 uh, TPS, which is really large. It's much higher than the TPS of systems like MPISA and Visa and these things. Um, our building, our, sorry, our bottleneck lies elsewhere. It is in the place called the sequencer, which sequentially, sequentially processes one transaction after the other. Right now, it's operating at a rate of roughly 100 or 100 to 200 TPS. Uh, by the end of the year, because of all kinds of improvements we're doing to it, we expect it to reach uh, 500 to 1,000 TPS, which is what the stone prover can uh, operate uh, with today. Um, now, let me tell you a little bit about our next generation proving uh, prover called Stu. Um, the main reasons it's going to be much more efficient by roughly 100x or more on top of the uh, stone prover, the current day prover of Starknet, is that first of all, we're moving to using uh, much smaller integers in our computation. We're going to use the 32 bit field elements. That gives you roughly 100x improvement in uh, multiplication time. Um, we're going to have a new and improved Cairo VM that it will be fully backward compatible, but will also be uh, much more agile and support more computation. We're going to use a lot of mathematical breakthroughs like the Circle Stark uh, uh, math breakthrough, the GKR lookup, and mixed degree traces. Um, I'm not going to go into technical detail of the, about these, but if you look up Circle Stark, the white paper there, you'll read a lot more about these uh, very impressive breakthroughs that our team has come up with. By the way, the Circle Stark paper is a beautiful collaboration of uh, Stark or team um, along with uh, the Polygon Zero team. So it's a beautiful paper. Those of you who like math, please look it up. Just Google for Circle Stark. Um, now I want to tell you a little bit um, about why would we want to reach 10,000 TPS. I mean, if you look at the TPS demand today on Starknet, it's uh, around one TPS of demand, and we can already support 100 TPS, and by the end of the year, we'll reach 1,000 TPS. So why work hard to get more? Why do we want to do this? Well, um, let's look at the internet. Until the late 1990s, there was very little usage. And if you ask yourself, why? Why is it that the internet today is used in so many applications? But this wasn't the case uh, you know, 30 years ago. So here's what Wikipedia has to say about it. The dramatic expansion of the capacity of the internet had a revolutionary impact on culture, commerce, and technology. This made possible the rise of near instant communication by electronic mail, instant messaging, and other things. So basically what Wikipedia says is that increasing the capacity unleashes a lot more innovation and makes possible new things that are currently not possible. So when we reach 1,000 TPS and 10,000 TPS through the hard work of developers like yourself, Starknet will unleash new applications that are not like the ones today seen on blockchain, just a little bit better or faster. They will be completely novel and better. And why are we doing this? In order to make our vision a reality. So what is our vision? That in a free society, integrity should never be assumed, but rather demonstrated publicly. And why is this needed? So that you will own your data, your assets, your actions, and your life. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference. Please stick around on StarkNet.